Okay, I'm ready to start. <laughs> okay. I don't know how to do this anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Welcome to Castles and Cryptids, where the castles are haunted and the cryptids are cryptic AF. And the hosts are back. <laughs> After a slight absence, uh, and we're yeah. happy. We're happy to be back. Yes, um, I. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I semi have my voice back, and uh, yeah, I'm still pretty sick. But I don't know. I've been <laughs> off work for like two and a half weeks, and I'm kind of at like a plateau of getting better. So I don't know. <laughs> kind of this is good this is good yeah and uh, yes you sound you sound like yourself you sound like kelsey (laughs) that's good because to myself i sound terrible so oh i think you still sound recognizable (laughs) but yeah it's like you can usually tell when you know if you listen to a podcast long enough you can start to tell when they have a cold just like any of your other friends or family yeah it's true but yeah what can we do? We didn't want to leave you guys without an episode, so Kelsey's being a trooper, and <laughs> we're going to see how it goes. <laughs> yeah, she survived, what, fevers, uh, <laughs> having basically no voice, hacking up a lung, uh, oh. two ear infections. Uh, Both of them, yep. <laughs> yep, basically losing all of my hearing, um, which is still semi coming back. Um, That's why I sent you that gift because I was like, it's, you are literally see no evil, hear no evil, speak no evil. Yeah. You just went from one to the other where you're like, couldn't talk and then you couldn't hear and then you kind of couldn't see. Yeah, like a, a week ago on, what would that have been, November 6th, I kind of overnight that night my eye started really hurting because with like the two ear infections there was a lot of pressure and like swelling just in my head and I could feel it affecting my eye and my eye went really like bloodshot and then there was like discharge like goopy stuff coming out of my eye and then I basically didn't sleep that night but I've had it something similar before because I have like problems with inflammation so there's something similar that happens Mm. that's called iritis and it's like swelling in your eye and you need steroid drops for it and it felt exactly the same so i figured it was either the iritis coming or it was something related to like me being sick and like i'm infected everywhere so (laughs) when i got up sunday morning or yeah saturday sometime during the night one of the times I tried to get up, I like opened my eye and my vision was like almost like 50% gone. Like I could see blurs, but I couldn't like properly see anything or have depth perception. It was basically just like a smear of different colors, like out of my one eye. That's all I could see. Um, Jeez. Yeah. And it's, it's very serious when you, when you get iritis like you have to treat it within like hours and I was like basically waiting because this was at like I don't know 2 a.m so I'm basically waiting until like optometrists start opening up on Sunday morning to try and get in um for an emergency thing to see because it can cause you to lose your vision so I went in yeah um I went in and they gave me steroid drops they said it wasn't iritis it was related to like the illness I have at the moment but they give me the steroid drop still which helps so I'm still taking the drops um, okay and stuff like that because they have to wean you off of them because they're steroid drops and it like can cause problems in, in your eye if you stop them abruptly but I'm happy I can see out of it around yeah yeah <laughs> no that doubt. was scary because oh i i've had iritis come on really fast like that before um and i know like how serious it can be and stuff and it yeah, yeah. it was yeah i've never heard of it that's crazy I've had it, though i've had it like properly three times before so like it felt exactly the same but 
they're like it wow. wasn't thyroiditis this time it was just related to everything else but yeah so i survived almost going blind in one eye losing my hearing having fevers coughing uh not sleeping <laughs> for like two and a half weeks because all that was happening at the same time well that's just it i was gonna say it's just the the culmination of everything when you get everything yeah. going together and then it's your whole oh, yeah. body is just like rebelling and you're like this is not great no. and then it makes it yeah when once you can't sleep then yeah then you're tired on top of everything else yeah that just must have been awful like yeah i don't know i <laughs> we haven't seen each other so i was kind of like, like great i don't want to get this but <laughs> yeah, I it does suck, it? yeah it's like i i was like well at least you got your your sick family to bring you chicken noodle soup or whatever no. <laughs> i don't know I... but yeah your whole family's been sick yeah i caught it, it. when it goes around we've all caught it from each other uh my dad was the last one to catch it. I was second last, but uh, last yeah, <laughs> I I was definitely like the worst. Nobody else has had fevers. Nobody else has had ear infections, uh, anything to do with their eyes. They yeah. basically have had sore throats and coughs and like kind of gar sure. gargly like voices. But yeah, it hit me harder yeah. and stuff because you know, immunocompromised. So anything I get can make me a lot sicker. But yeah. <clears throat> yeah, it seems like a lot of people that back to work and then work with the public and then now it's hard shopping season and that we're getting yes. into that like my mom's also sick, but then she's like, Oh, no, I still went to work today. And I'm like, Mom, <laughs> they're yeah. like just a shorter shift and you're like damn it i thought after covid we would well it just sucks when you can't take sick days too like i was just saying to yeah. you off air like north america the culture is still pretty like workaholic type mm -hmm. life which is just not fun really <laughs> no i have been off work for at this point as of recording two and a half weeks and Wow. I had 5.25 hours of sick time. That's what we get like per year. So that's like half of one shift. So I basically lost more than an entire paycheck already. Um, yeah, that's a shitty yeah. policy they got going there. <clears throat> I mean, I'm not saying everywhere. Like we have it. Sometimes it's okay in Canada, but like depending where you work, but... We still don't have anything like you know you always hear about like sweden i think they get like five weeks off a year just off just everyone yeah <laughs> you just get it and it's like yeah you know you'd have time to like not get sick because you'd probably get some downtime yeah that's <laughs> true relax. yeah yeah when you're overworked and stressed and stuff it can take a lot longer for you to get over things and get feeling better and easier oh, to yeah, get especially sick. especially when you have to go out in the cold. Yeah. Yeah. It's bloody, it's bloody cold here. We got snow. It's definitely, my mom says it's still nice out in New Brunswick, but like here it looks like winter now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it's Canada. Well, it's to be expected in the <laughs> Northern regions, but yeah. Oh, well. It's, at least it's sunny today, and that th it was causing my snow to fall off. <laughs> chunk, chunk, chunk. <laughs> off mm, <my> yeah. Roof. <laughs> well, um, I put something on the drive for you to look at that I want to talk Ooh. about for our fun fact. Okay. It has to do with cryptids and a mm. new cryptid. A and new I don't know cryptid. if you've heard about it. I don't know if we talked about this. It came to my attention that an AI was asked to like make a cryptid or something like that. And they came up with this creature called Loab. So there's a oh, picture, is that what I'm a picture of the drive called Loab. That's <laughs> scary. It looks like a creepy woman. I think it kind of looks like Roseanne Barr with five days stubble and <laughs> really red cheeks. <laughs> I don't know yeah. how else to describe it. A very like 
Homer Simpson looking mouth, like mouth and jaw area. Yeah, the mouth gives me like Neanderthal vibes. Yeah. It's like a big, wide mouth and lips and stuff, but like it looks kind of like a weird human. Yeah. With long brown, like hair. So does AI think humans are cryptids? I don't know. I guess I should have looked up the story more. I've just heard it talked about in a couple different <laughs> podcasts recently, and I was like, so it's known as the first AI generated cryptid. Um, on ScreenRant.com, it says Lo Loab is a horrific cryptid image generated by Twitter user Super Composite with a text to image AI generator. Oh, so those things where you like can type in like sexy cryptid and then it comes up with something for you. Because <laughs> oh. I know someone that did that recently on their Instagram. Uh, um, yeah, it's just. It's weird. It's L O A B like her... if you guys want to look it up. B yeah, like the hair looks normal and then like her forehead yeah. and eyebrows look semi normal yeah. and then the rest of the face looks like yeah. it like a weird like facial reconstruction right something. yeah like they're made I, out of clay or something like yeah, yeah. like very lumpy and just, like this is what a human might look like sort of if you ask a computer <laughs> to see yeah that's a weird human <laughs> i don't know i'll stick with i think i like our, our non-ai generated cryptids better <laughs> yes this one's weird <laughs> creepy yeah it's i think it gives you that um you've heard of the uncanny valley i think we might have talked about it like dolls kind of fall into that because they're oh, human yeah like but not quite human so it gives us that eerie feeling of like something's not quite right here <laughs> yeah where you're yeah. like you just like unconsciously you're waiting for them to blink or something right you're like this is almost yeah looks normal but something's something's weird and it just gives you yeah. weird vibes yeah anyway that's that <laughs> i wondered if you'd heard of it so i thought oh i gotta bring that up because if we got if there's a new cryptid we have to talk about it even if it's fucking <laughs> yeah it's technology generated <laughs> so weird but looking yeah i mean we could talk about how creepy like alexa gets up to just laughing out oh, of nowhere yeah. Oh yeah, I think I AI saw a headline about creepy. that. Yeah, I listened to something the other day where they they compiled a bunch of different people's accounts, and it was really cool to like hear it all at once. It would just oh. be like out of the blue, like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh. or like Alexa detects movement. <laughs> You're like, oh, where? <laughs> no thanks. Sounds like we could do an episode on that though. That'd be fun. <laughs> Haunted technology. <laughs> yeah, basically. Yeah. Thing creepy things that AIs have said. Like Pat showed me that one where the creepiest thing the the AI, the really good AI robot, like one of those ones that really looks like a human lady or whatever. And they were like, Oh, don't worry. When when I when we rule the world, I'll keep you in my people zoo. <laughs> Oh yeah, I've heard that before. So creepy. Yeah. I I don't want to be in the people zoo. Just kill me. No. Yes. Just kill. <laughs> Just kill. Okay, Just so your Alexa's noting that down for future reference. No. Yeah. <laughs> you don't have one, do you? Uh, no. Those devices like a Google Home or whatever. Probably for the best. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> well, we have a couple stories for you today with a kind of a loose theme, I guess, which maybe I cursed us by picking a theme that was centered around um, a day because it was going to be sort of near the day it was coming out. <laughs> yeah. Not no more. But then you can't always control that. So yeah, yeah. The day of the dead, Dia de la Muertos crimes theme is... <clears throat> a little late. <laughs> yeah. It was, like I said, it was a loose theme. We were going for that or Mexico crimes. So I don't know. I have no idea what you brought. 
is what I'm saying, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I I went with basically just Mexico crimes. Uh, right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So we went <clears throat> we the slightly different directions because I picked something that was more on on a certain day. So this should be interesting. Mm. It should be a, a kind of a grab bag of an episode then because it's like two you know different yeah. things. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I'm excited. <laughs> uh, mine, I did my notes like so long ago, and then I went to open them yesterday because mm -hmm. I couldn't even remember what my case was. Right. Uh, right. And it was like rereading it and was like, oh, yeah, I remember this <laughs> vaguely. <laughs> this yeah. is crazy. <laughs> yeah. Um, nice. It's like no, a cold mine. read for you. No. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, mine's not too crazy. Not something I normally do, but... More snow uh, just fell off, like... <laughs> okay, I'm good. Give you a heart attack. Yeah, because it just... I see it go by the window, like... <laughs> oh, <fast>. yeah. <laughs> anyway, I'm sorry. I had to explain uh, why I looked startled. <laughs> <clears throat> so, yeah, mine's not something i would say i normally would do um but when i was looking up different like cases or crimes in mexico it was one that i thought was kind of interesting to talk about um because it oh, kind of okay. seems to be a bit of a problem in mexico um that oh. yeah i i myself didn't really know too much about um so for my case i chose it's the murder of i didn't look up how to pronounce her last name or her first name uh oh, okay. uh her name is digna ochoa and okay i know you looked up the last name <laughs> yeah. i was here <laughs> <laughs> yeah because i was like oh there's <laughs> underlined i need to know how to pronounce at least her last name uh, <laughs> yes, I know. Sometimes first is easier than last, or vice versa. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, so she was born May fifteenth, nineteen sixty four, in Veracruz, Mexico. Oh, uh, we're going yeah. in the time machine. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, in nineteen eighty four, she was going to law school in the state capital. And she was also working part-time for the Veracruz Attorney General's offices starting in around 1986. Oh, cool. Uh, I couldn't find a whole lot on her background other than a few specific things that happened leading up to her death. Uh, the first uh -huh. is that she was kidnapped uh, on August 16th, 1988 and oh shit yeah uh during this time she was pretty politically active with some opposition groups uh she oh. told her yeah so yeah i mean she was trying to <laughs> speak up for people she told her friends and family that she had found what was described as a blacklist of union and political activists uh, at her employer's office didn't really have more information about that, so maybe it was more like opposition people. Okay, so it's <clears throat> like this kidnapping is more of like a politically based. Yeah, because kind of she's like she's working at the attorney general's office. Uh, later, she becomes like a lawyer. Um, sure. So she's pretty uh, high profile. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. So interesting. She, <laughs> Yeah, so she finds this like blacklist of union and political activists at her employer's office. Uh, she's then abducted in Veracruz. Uh, when she's abducted, she claimed that her kidnappers were state police officers and that while she was kidnapped, that they had raped her. Uh, oh, yeah. no. Uh, for this... Yeah, for this kidnapping, however, there was no investigations formally made about any of the allegations, like into the police what? officers or the rape. Yeah. Why are we not that surprised? Yeah. They like uh, to protect their own. 
Mm -hmm. uh, in 1991, she entered the Dominican convent uh, of the incarnate world. Uh, so she was studying like to become a nun, basically, mm -hmm. okay. in 1991. Okay. <laughs> uh, she was there for, I believe, eight years uh, up until 1999, where she ended up leaving without taking, I assume, her final vows. Um, oh, okay. She just went through all yeah. the work and then left? Yeah, there isn't a whole lot of, like, formal details, I guess, about too many of these things. Right. Uh, then that brings us to her second kidnapping. I like, oh, so shitty. Um, okay. <laughs> uh, it's like, wait a second, what? Yeah. Oh my god. Uh, so a lot of the information I got from, there's a ludovictorario.org. Um, it's an award that she... I believe that's the award she received like after her death, which we'll get into it. There's a couple different sites that are like .org, like government registered websites that had write-ups about her. Um, oh, okay. famous. Uh, so this was one of the things and it was on their website talking about her. It said, quote, in August, 1999, she was kidnapped for the second time, and she was forced into the back of a car, struck in the stomach by two unknown men who threatened her with death, and then released her three hours or four hours later. Uh, during this time, they kept her backpack and files that contained personal documents. Um, her employer, the PRODH, believes that the latest threats were related to this abduction, which we'll get into in just a moment. Um, so it's basically part of like what she was doing in like activism and part of her job was making her a pretty public target. Um, for okay, her life. but she was released um, after four hours, you said this time? Yeah, the kidnappers did. Oh, yeah, that's so weird. It's like, what did you want? They took her her files, though. Yeah, they took her documents oh. and threatened her. Uh, they had also been sending threatening messages to her place of work, threatening like all of the employees, basically. Oh, nice. Uh, yeah, her business card was found. Uh, possibly was found stole sorry, her business card possibly the one that was stolen during this abduction was included in mailed threats so letters that were mailed to her employer one of her business cards that was stolen during this abduction was mailed back to her oh, employer weird yeah <laughs> uh it continues on saying september 3rd 1999 three anonymous uh, communications containing death threats arrived at the mail uh, to the Miguel Agustin Pro Juarez Center for Human Rights. So that's where she's working, where the PRODH offices. Um, so oh, she's okay. working at a center for human rights. Uh, while the that threats. Sounds very good of her. Right. I know. Yeah. Uh, while the threats appeared to be directed against all the members of the work, there was particular concern for the safety of her uh, as the company's legal coordinator. And then uh, a few days later on September 8th, there was four more anonymous letters containing death threats that arrived at the offices. One of the letters was addressed specifically to the PRODH's legal staff. And the staff members have also been receiving threatening phone calls at their homes. Um, wow. They yeah. don't give up easily, these harassers. No. Yeah, it seems to be like a running thing. That's why this case is pretty popular. We'll, I'll kind of get into it at the end, but it's a pretty dangerous place in Mexico even today for like human rights activists and things like that. Or even human oh, rights okay. lawyers. Well, that's shitty. 
should be able to advocate for human rights wherever in the world. Right. Yeah. Um, so that brings us to her third kidnapping. Because... Uh, sure, why not? <laughs> right? I guess why I should not? just expect it by now. Oh, She's like, another yeah. Tuesday. <laughs> uh, this happened... So it was, I believe, about... Oh, this was a couple months later. So the second one was in August. This one's October 28th of that same year. Um, this was from that website that gave her the award again. Uh, it said, quote, in a nine hour ordeal beginning late October 28th, 1999, at around 11 p.m., she had been kidnapped in her own home, threatened and left unconscious tied to her bed. Oh, damn. So, like, yeah, attacked her in her own house. Uh, the attackers had placed an open gas tank near her, like beside her and left. Uh, when she finally came around, she was able to free herself in time to close the gas tank. I assume it was oh. probably like enough that it would have just like probably just suffocated her, like poisoned her with the gas. I don't think they were like, it was supposed to explode right. or something like that. Um, right. More of a, there's a gas leak. And so... Yeah, yeah, carbon monoxide or whatever happens in that case. Yeah. Okay. Great. Uh, so she like came around, she was able to free herself, close the gas tank. Later she found in her house the files that had been stolen during her kidnapping in August. So like oh my God. they gave these back to her, I guess. Weird. Uh, <laughs> right. She's like, thanks. <laughs> I believe it's said that the same day this happened, like this kidnapping happened, uh, the offices at the PRODH had been searched and like broken into and like kind of rummaged through. Everything was in disarray. And they also found more mm -hmm. anonymous threatening letters. Uh, more anonymous letters? Is that what you yeah. said? Yeah threatening letters okay. oh yeah mm -hmm. uh back to her house her phone lines had been cut uh when she later disc or discovered the files apparently left behind by her assailants that had been taken during her attack and abduction on august 9th um so they were left behind which is really confusing to me i don't think i've ever heard somebody <laughs> like leaving behind files from their abduction yeah. a couple months ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's almost a reverse, you know, they, they broke, they entered, and they gave yeah. you something back. <laughs> you didn't need these ones anymore. These things we stole, we're going to unsteal them. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. Uh, so... On the morning of the 29th, the staff found that their offices had been broken into. Their desks in the legal area were all ransacked. They discovered those death threats scrawled on a file folder. Wow. Uh, still in October, there was... This is kind of like from the website. It listed these. Uh, there was an anonymous written uh, letter containing a bomb threat that was discovered in the area of the offices where the legal staff work. Several members of the legal staff, including Miss Ochoa, uh, had just returned from a two-day trip to the southern state of Guerrero for the legal defense of imprisoned clients. Uh, so they had just returned and had this scary, like, bomb threat. Yeah, it sounds like they're just trying to scare them into continuing their work they're like oh if we just threaten them enough they'll just stop it's like okay <laughs> yeah seriously Sad. Uh, yeah it was like i talk about these because it's like a like a build-up of stuff like she's been kidnapped three times they've been receiving all these threats mm -hmm. um, definitely some escalation sorry some escalation there yeah yeah. Uh, on October 5th, when she found in her home the papers that had previously been stolen from her and now returned, the papers appeared uh, at a new address. Uh, so she had, like, I assume she had moved during this time. 
So okay. yeah, the papers came to her, were left at her new address, even though they stated just her former address, which suggested that her whereabouts, even though she, I assume, had moved, were being tracked, like, pretty consistently, I guess. If just a couple right. months later she already moved and they had already tracked her down again. Damn. Um, yeah. She just can't get away. No. Uh, the month prior in September, the staff had found two written, like handwritten death threats inside of a desk drawer at the PRODH offices. Um, yeah. So. <clears throat> they should just get a life. <laughs> <laughs> right. Damn. Yeah. Just like, who has the time for this? <laughs> Are these Scientologists? <laughs> oh, God. Because well, uh, they <laughs> run those super hard yeah. campaigns. Against it's like any, insane. Any, what do they call them? Suppressive persons or whatever. Yeah. Mm, yeah. So obviously with all these like death threats against the offices, these three kidnappings, uh, after all of this, the Mexico City Police did investigate kind of what was going on. There was an inter-American human rights court that recommended that Ochoa be protected, like have kind of a detail put on her um, for protection. Yeah, that's good. And in August of 2000, she went, it said she went into exile in Washington, D.C. Uh, so she went to the oh. U.S. And Aww. while she was there, she was actually presented with the Amnesty International's Endearing Spirit Award in Los Angeles by actor Martin Sheen. So she was oh, given cool. an award. So not super laying low, but... I mean, right? Well, it just it just sucks that they kind of succeeded in driving her out of her own home. Yeah. With all this, yeah, this whole shit. Yeah. yeah. Um, she does return to Mexico City in March of 2001 and she was then receiving the government protection uh again. Uh in okay. August so a few months later, 2001, her court-ordered protection was actually lifted, um, oh, no. which we'll kind of get into because there's actually a court case that was brought up called the Inter-American Court of Human Rights that I talked about that had the protective order. There's the case of the Digna Ochoa and family members versus Mexico. So they basically sued the government. So the government has and i read like through Ooh. basically the whole court case um all this stuff and some of this information is taken from there um what oh, they really? documented yeah um so i have some of it at the end uh yeah so we'll get into why her court ordered protection was lifted but it was in august of 2001 uh she once again began working in law offices in mexico city starting on october 16th in 2001 where she was representing various like dissidents and different cases of alleged human rights abuses. Uh, cool. Yeah, so she was <laughs> she was doing good. I mean, she was the human rights abuses she was representing included torture by government authorities, particularly the army. Um, it said. And one thing that she was essentially, she was representing Mexico's poorest citizens government, against government interests. Aww. Uh, Real hero. Yeah. Yeah, she I don't was trying like that. No. <laughs> I don't like that. This is a sad story about her tragic end. Right. Uh, as we kind of talked about, many of your coworkers also faced harassment and death threats. Uh these harassment death threats were were sometimes investigated, but rarely resulted in actually being able to identify who the was, person was that was harassing or who the perpetrators were. Okay. Yeah, that can yeah. be hard to cross yeah. or punish. Whatever. Yeah, that can be yeah. hard. <laughs> I don't think they were investigating super hard about it, though. 
So right, I, I could see that. <laughs> yeah. But it just sucks when they're like, oh, if they have, like, they'll be like, oh, they haven't really done anything yet, but other threats, so that's all we can get them on or whatever. Right. That's why there's a few, uh, like, true crime ones on Netflix that are about stalkers and stuff. Yeah. And I refuse, I refuse to watch those because that's some of, like, the scariest shit mm -hmm. is when you, like, know yeah. somebody is, like, threatening to kill you and, like, you just know and, like, you've done mm -hmm. so many try and protect yourself against this person and it just isn't working. Like, I refuse right. to like, those because I just get, like, oh. too scared. Yeah. Well, they can be. That abducted in plain sight one's pretty, pretty yeah. crazy. I remember watching that and being like, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, no, it's not good. No. So that brings us to uh, Ochoa's unfortunate death. So this occurred just three days after she returned to work um, at these human oh. rights court. Yeah. Uh, on October 19th, 2001, uh, her body was found inside the office at the law office where she was working in the Roma district of Mexico City. At the time of her death, she was only 37 years old. And she was in her office. She was in a office. I don't think she worked. Oh. I think that she maybe worked for the company, but I don't think she worked like out of that office but that was like her employer's office right it's like, kind of so confusing it's a public building it's still yeah. like it sounds like it was like broad daylight it's crazy yeah uh she was only 37 and at the time of her death she was involved in the defense of peasant ecologists in guerrero uh i didn't know oh what that was but yeah uh a Some note was good or shit <laughs> yeah uh, a note was found by her body there's some discrepancy on what the note actually said um based on the court documents i found they said that the note read as pros sons of bitches if you keep going one of you will get one of you will also get fucked up don't say we didn't warn you um so that was found like right oh. by her body great just awful they're just literally motivated by killing good people that are doing good things for other people right like what the fuck <laughs> yeah so her autopsy that was performed indicated that she had two 22 caliber bullet wounds and her cause of death was determined to be a gunshot wound to the head the entry wound was from the left side of her head and according to the coroner's report, the bullet passed through the skull from left to right at a slight downward angle and then remained embedded in her front temporal bone. Uh, they said this was interesting in it coming in from the left side because Ochoa was right handed, which raised questions about why she would shoot herself with her opposite hand. Because guess what? They thought she Never shot herself? Yeah. Oh my god. Uh, wake up, people. Uh, the other bullet, because I said she was shot twice, had entered Ochoa's thigh from front to back. So she had also been shot in the leg. Oh, sure, because Several... that's usually how people complete suicide or whatever the fuck. They just right. shoot themselves all over and hope for the best. Yeah. Uh, several oh. investigations were started. Uh, and originally her death was ruled a homicide. However, the search for her killer or killers lacked uh, any sort of impartiality, uh, integrity. Uh, the investigations were plagued by bias. There was a lot of gender stereotyping. And they also publicly damaged her image and reputation in order to minimize the impact of her death. Um, okay, great. Just the worst we'll, thing. We'll kind of get into um, more with like the court documents they talk about Ugh. that a bit more uh during the initial stage of the investigation there was 1370 uh, measures were taken 282 statements and 247 prosecute prosecutorial procedures 
There was 269 (laughs) expert reports and 572 communications received. Uh, However, wow. Okay. I mean, so they did do a lot of investigation. However, as I kind of said later, her death was reclassified as a suicide, which was disputed actively and almost immediately by several senators. Um, Good. As clearly. Hopefully by anyone that knew her or just like, it just seems like common sense. Right. Just look at the crime scene. And like, again, she's going against government like government yeah. things too so i feel like they were trying to like yeah. cover up stuff the motive is sure there yeah yeah oh yeah i get like the motive to cover it up might also be there i see what you're saying <laughs> yeah. yeah uh so Ugh. there was crime scene photos and personal letters that were written by ochoa to others that were leaked by investigators to the public uh, in an active effort to convince the public that she had committed suicide. Um, That's so wrong. Yeah. So they public, like they published the crime scene photos. These personal letters included letters between her and her boyfriend that even were published by the New York Times. So it wasn't just in Mexico. Like even what? The New York what are they hoping to do by publishing the letters? I just don't understand how those would. I it didn't it really say like letters. Yeah. Were. So maybe there was like something like defamatory, like in the letters that by publishing them, they were they were basically trying to do this to ruin her reputation and to push towards yeah. the suicide theory. So maybe there was like something sad about the letters or yeah something Something they could have taken and make like made it their own taken it yeah like they do oh i can take an angle on this yeah Mm -hmm. um so the suicide theory was really relied on the fact that they were claiming she would shoot herself in the leg with her right hand and then put the gun in her left hand kneel on the floor and sh- then shoot herself in the head with her left hand so like why would yeah you execution do? style literally like yeah. kneeling on the floor <laughs> like okay <Yeah. laughs> uh investigations focused on her friends and family it said that they focused on her social environment her circumstances her work environment and also any sort of involvement that could have been by the military or army um wow. they were basically just trying to investigate like who possibly could have done this and they came up with no specific leads uh they really just had the escalating threats and kidnapping which unfortunately because <laughs> just her the death, kidnapping right you know. um but because her death had now at this point been reclassified as a suicide they weren't allowed to submit these escalating threats or the three previous kidnappings. Um, they weren't allowed to be wow. considered in the case at all because it was now reclassified as a suicide, which is exactly just... what they wanted. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Um, Gross. So there's a bit I have from, uh, this was about one of the lines of investigation. It's from the Marxists.org. Uh, oh, okay. Marxists are weighing in. <laughs> yeah. Sure. I don't know. It had. It was one of the ones that had really good write-ups. Um, it said, quote, oh, okay. on June 5th, La Jornda del Sur published an article by a highly respected journalist, uh, Maribel Guitares naming two hired assassins and the intellectual author of Ochoa's assassination. The okay. article, yeah, the article names Nicolas Martinez Sanchez and Gustavo Zarati Martinez as the killers, both of who, both of whom have themselves so- subsequently been murdered. Oh <laughs> shit! Yeah. Wow. Uh, as well as the rancher uh, Rogarcino, Alba Alvarez, 
who was closely linked to the military, police, and narcotics trafficking as the man who hired to the, hired them. Um, so this was one so line somebody... of inquiry. Right. Like, like the military like angle. Somebody retaliated against the killers is what they're saying like uh, i think it's more like tying up loose ends like they hired them and then they got taken out after um because for like oh, this the angle, military the military yeah. hired those guys they think yeah what the fuck for somebody linked to the military understand. This was just like one of one of the angles because mm -hmm. this case is completely unsolved. We don't actually know who did it. Damn. Um, yeah, it is widely believed that the murder of Ochoa was the work of the Mexican military intelligence or the CISENA, and they killed her due to her role in bringing a number of cases against the military. Um. <sighs> Because yeah. why should they have to, yeah, face any, you know, court of law? Yeah, right? they like to keep their military punishments within the military, but like, come on, yeah. that's that's how shit just stays, yeah, gross. <laughs> yeah, like a um, boys' club and shit. Yeah. So going through like what's happened since in two thousand two, Ochoa received the postpartum. Uh, received postpartum the International Human Rights Award. So she received it. Yeah, she received it after her death. I mean, uh, that's nice. Yeah. Uh, this was the yeah awards by the Global Exchange, an international NGO based in San Francisco. And then in 2003, she received the Ludovic Trevero International Human Rights Prize that's awarded by European bars. So that's where I got some of the information was actually the uh, the Ludovic Torero human rights uh, website in their write up about her. Wow. That's where I got quite a bit of the information. They had oh, a lot of cool. the dates and information about her kidnappings and like harassment she had. Um, wow. In 2005, the investigation into her death was actually reopened once again after there was some pressure from different human rights activists, which is good. Wow. I didn't really, um, I don't think there's much of an update about her case since then. I didn't run across it. Uh, Mexico, okay. yeah. Uh, in general, uh, Mexico is viewed as being one of the most dangerous countries in the world for human rights defenders, as well as a, having a very high death and violence against women just in general. Um, there's a lot of kidnappings and stuff like that in Mexico. And the government itself acknowledges that from just December 2018 to September of 2021, there was 94 defenders that had been killed, 23 of them women. Uh, so these were like public defenders. Oh, just so in like two overall. and a half years. Yeah. Wow. Uh, yeah. In October 2020, the Mexican Congress, with the approval of President Lopez Obrador, uh, they actually had the independent trust fund that financed part of the protection programs. Um, I assume that is referring to like the protection program that like she had in place back in like 2001. I think right. that's what it's sounds referring like they, to. Yeah. Like it sounds like they're uh, necessary to have. Well, in security in, two, in 2020, with the approval of the president, they actually terminated the funds um, for that program. Oh, God. Okay. So, yeah, <laughs> step in the wrong direction. Great. Yeah, that's always um, disappointing. <laughs> yeah. The judgment of the Inter-American Court of Human Rights on the case of Digna Ochoa actually condemned the Mexican state for serious failings in the investigation of her death. And this was actually a very important milestone for justice and human rights, and particularly uh, for her and then 
just women human rights defenders. Uh, so, yeah. <clears throat> just I mean, who's some... going to defend the defenders? Right? The Avengers. No. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, it sucks, though. It really sucks for them because they're already doing a hard job. They're trying to make the world a better place, and then someone kills them. It's just yeah. not fair. Uh, so, some information I pulled from like that court case, the case of Ochoa and family members versus Mexico. Mm -hmm. um, I don't really have the context of these anymore, but this is like taken from it directly. Uh, it was just saying, according to the commission's country report for 1998, it had received various complaints regarding acts of intimidation committed in Mexico against different members of human rights organizations and community groups. Uh, so that was a few years before the murder. Uh, they okay. indicated that various social and political movements and organizations, in addition to students, activists, and attorney groups in Mexico, had been the victims of threats, kidnappings, arbitrary detention, robbery, searches and raids, fabricated charges, and just plain disappearance. Oh, yeah. Just all not good. No. Like, <laughs> uh, shit. Consequently, it expressed its concern over the serious incidents of harassment and violence affecting human rights defenders and the members of social organizations in Mexico. Uh, it urged the Mexican state to conduct a serious examination of the situations described as to avoid any repetition of these events. Um, so I believe that was all before Ochoa's death even. Okay. Um, they also it's underlined lot, that... It's a lot of information, sorry. <laughs> yeah. No. Uh, they also underlined that women's human rights defenders encounter additional obstacles just linked to just in general, like gender discrimination, because they're typically the victims of like stigmatization, uh, exposed to sexist or misogynist comments or uh, their allegations are not taken seriously, um, which is still today, I mean. Oh, so yeah. Still going on. Anyone who's worked as a, a young woman in any kind of public-facing job yeah. knows you might get an old man that you're like, oh, he doesn't want to listen to what I have to say coming from, you know, a younger woman, <laughs> so you have to go pretend to get a manager that's a man, or like, you know, and then they're all, oh, fine, whatever. <laughs> Tell yeah. them the same thing. <laughs> right? It's so crazy. Um, yeah. Bullshit. <laughs> it also said that the uh, in the report that the situation of human rights defenders uh, in a 2019 report said that the threat of violence, including sexual violence, is also often used to silence women defenders and that women defenders are also at the risk of uh, femicide it's just like getting killed just simply because you're a woman that's a big problem um Great. when I was looking at stuff that happens <laughs> in Mexico um they're also subjected to a lot of rape uh acid attacks uh uh different killings and then enforced like disappearances um wow in the court documents, they said that in light of the fact that the petitioners alleged that the precautionary measures that were put in place uh, to protect Ochoa before she was killed, they said that according to the state, they had been determined not to be effective. And that on November 11th, 1999, the commission asked the court to issue uh, provisional measures and the court granted the measures uh, considering that the safety of the members of the center was in grave danger. Uh, the court required yeah. that the state adopt all necessary measures to protect the life and integrity of Ochoa and the other members of the center of the pro PRODH. Um, however, just that short time later, they lifted the measures uh 
and they reiterated the request, but the representatives indicated that the uh, agreement and these provisional like protective measures be lifted because according to the commission, the acts of harassment and threats leading to the provisional measures had ceased. But like how, no, they had definitely not ceased in any way. Um, no, it's usually that the department runs out of money to fund yeah, the program that's, that's going on. Ugh. Yeah. Not because uh, they solved it. <laughs> yeah, they had definitely not ceased. If anything, like what I think I said, there was like seven incidents in October and she was killed at the near the end of October. Like, yeah. So Still for you to say, yeah. yeah, you to say that like they were slowing down at all is like, yeah, really Just... fucked up. Yeah, ridiculous. I don't um, like it. <laughs> no. no. I just have a tiny bit. They did describe, like, the crime scene uh, in the court documents, which was the only time I really saw it described. Um, they said that they found her lying against, I think, like, an armchair or like in the, sitting in an armchair with bullet wounds, the firearm and three shell casings were also found, but she was only shot twice, question mark. Uh, <laughs> uh, they said, uh, yeah, the crime scene was described as follows. Uh, observed was a dead body female slumped to the left with her, the head propped up on a brown armchair with red stripes. Another chair of the same color was against the north wall, and on the left arm armrest was white powder, seemingly talcum powder. Uh, oh, sure. Know. Yeah. Uh, on the like, left. Why side would it of... be like baby powder and not like right? cocaine or something? <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> on the left side of the seat, there was a blood stain, and on the floor was a piece of chewed gum as well as another blood stain between the feet of the deceased was the spent shell casing apparently a 22 caliber on the opposite side of the chair where the deceased head was resting was white powder seemingly talcum with white powder also appearing on the floor at the entry of the room upon lifting the body a firearm was discovered so like the gun apparently was like partially under her um hmm. Which doesn't make sense for suicide as well. Um, it said also I the corpse. Guess. Yeah. Like also the it. yeah. Uh, right. also the corpse was wearing red plastic gloves with the right glove not fully on and the left one with only the thumb out. Which What also... in the hell? And where yeah. is all the fingerprints and shit like they yeah they found something on all that so weird with all that weirdness um yeah and then it said on lifting up the arm uh armchair on which the head of the deceased was resting two spent shell casings were found so they were found like under her head like between her head and the armchair which also seems yeah, it doesn't kind make of a lot of sense either yeah um Even the, the last... multiple gunshot wounds is also like right? i feel like it's not Im i know it's not impossible like for someone to shoot themselves with a shotgun using their toes right. or whatever so i'm sure it's like maybe not impossible but it seems highly improbable yeah also to shoot yourself in the thigh first is kind of strange. yeah what were you doing there yeah you just whoa i missed <laughs> like yeah <laughs> okay <laughs> um the last little bit I wanted to include was just also from like this court uh, documents just saying that uh, she like Ochoa had been recognized for her strong social vocation and sense of ethics and her achievements merit recognition. So she's she has won like since her death, like she has been given quite a number of awards and things like that um yeah which is great her efforts and commitment yeah. constitute an example in the fight to defend human rights 
because she defended those who few, if any, wanted to defend. Which Aww. I think is very, yeah. Yeah. Sad way to Robin Hood, like to take from, you know, yeah. Take from the rich, give to the poor, like help, help the poor. And maybe that's what the problem is, is that when people see you helping the poor, they think it's going to take from their riches. Yes. Maybe. I don't know. Yeah. I guess that's something but like if, that's got to be the motivation. If, if you feel like that, then you're definitely exploiting people. I mean, if you're not exploiting people, you have nothing to fear. So, like... No. Yeah. No, like, she wasn't doing anything wrong or anything. Like, no. No, she was... Yeah, it was really sad, like, case when I ended up reading up about it. Like, shoot. I think dedicated her life to a really good cause and it's sad that mm -hmm. like people weren't taking the threats against her and her co-workers seriously enough and yeah it it gives it a feeling of uh perfect like it could have been preventable and that's what makes yeah. those ones even harder to hear about when you're like feels like this should have been caught right before it got to that point yeah yeah, yeah. but it's from what I figured out, it's a pretty, like, important case in Mexico, and they, it does seem like there's, at least from what I saw, still, like, a big problem about, like, human rights violations and, like, violence and threats and stuff, so. Yeah, that sucks. That sucks hard. We need yeah. to work on that <laughs> as a species. <laughs> right? Mm. Yes. Ugh. Damn. Well, she sounds like an incredible human being. So it was cool yes. to hear her story. Yeah. Yeah. Good job. Uh, thank you. <laughs> you made it through. <laughs> yeah. Really good for being. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Having a lack of a voice for so long. <laughs> right. Uh, well, we'll take a quick break then for yes case number two it's also you know true crime so it's dark in its own way also <laughs> yeah but very different very different <laughs> you will see <laughs> all right yeah okay we'll be right back <laughs> no better not seriously though okay we're good <laughs> welcome mm -hmm. back Yes, Thanks for sticking around because <laughs> it's time for me to tell my tale. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I forgot. I kind of had a little bit of a a fun fact about Day of the Dead celebrations, and <laughs> <laughs> now it's great. Well, originally this episode was supposed to come out just <laughs> after it, wasn't it? Yeah. The fourth yeah. or the fifth, yeah, really close to yeah. Day of the Dead. But it's like the I could save it for next year. I don't know. Ah, it doesn't matter. <laughs> it was it's mostly about that the um the marigold flower is used a lot in Day of the Dead celebrations and also in Diwali celebrations. Oh. There was a little article about it, which I thought was kind of cool. Nice. Um yeah, they're really pretty. Like the the pictures that went along with this article, you know, Day of the Dead stuff. It's not just it's colorful too, right? Like so, it was really cool yeah. to see all the the marigolds. They placed them on tables as part of like centerpieces, and then oh, and strung in the doorways of homes. Uh, this is during Diwali, which is the Indian festival of lights. Yes. Just ask Kelly P Kapoor. <laughs> The episode Diwali, season three, episode six. <laughs> um, and then, yeah, so that's, that's it's crazy because it's used in that celebration in India and then also in all over Mexico and Central America. Um, not long after Diwali, which apparently is at like the end of October-ish, um, then mm. you get your Day of the Dead, which is usually celebrated from the first to the second of November. And nice. at that time, then they have marigolds dotting their tables and they're actually called, this is kind of cool, the Flor de Muerto. So like the flower mm. of the dead, I guess. 
and that's cool yeah it said that they feature quote prominently in traditional day of the dead celebrations each year a cheerful flower that reminds observers of the beauty of life while they honor loved ones who have passed yeah i like marigolds they're like yeah probably one of my favorite flowers like, I oh, think, really? like, yeah, orchids, orchids are probably my number Ooh. one. And I love a good, like, yeah. lily. Uh, sunflowers. Those lilies. are mine. All right. Uh, you guys know what flowers to send us. <laughs> Just yeah, <kidding>. sunflowers, <laughs> things like that. But Lilies, sure. <laughs> yeah, marigolds are really cool. Mm -hmm. They have a lot of, like, fluffy little petals don't they like when you, yeah. when you picture them now i'm like oh yeah they have like lots and lots and oh yeah there was cool because they had pictures of the in the indian religious festivals and they'll like have them like chains like some people will be selling just wow. chains of marigolds yeah like the pictures of those were really cool it's just like these nice. bright chains over their arms and they're yeah they call them garlands and when they are used in that part of the world, like in Asia, they're believed to have other medicinal properties like to cure hiccups and help heal wounds inflicted by lightning, I guess. <laughs> A very specific use. <laughs> yeah, I was like, it does what now? Hiccups and lightning. I was like, okay. <laughs> okay. And then it said in Mexico, marigolds can be used to decorate the graves. And sometimes people will create like a flower pathway to lead up to a loved one's home. So I don't know. It's like on, the, on the ground. Yeah. That's nice. And I like that. Yeah. And it's beautiful. And I don't know. I like it. I mean, similar to coming and putting like flowers on someone's grave. But this one just seems very like festive and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and it said that the, they believe the bright colors and strong smell are said to attract spirits. And so I guess that's why they use them to make like pathways for the spirits and stuff. Mm. And um, sometimes they're formed into a cross shape to cleanse souls as they are also believed to have healing properties. Nice. And that's, that was my fun <laughs> miracle fact. <laughs> um. All right, so I'm glad we got that out and we got a cryptid in. So we're really doing good. We're doing good. This is a strong yeah. comeback. <laughs> <laughs> and you guys got that, what? Uh, Sorry. that bonus Patreon episode last week. Or That's not last true. week, the week before. Yeah, where I said there wasn't going to be a new episode. It wasn't, I did, like, we put out a new episode for, for some of you and then. It turned it into a Patreon plug <laughs> so yeah. to remind you guys where all the extra cool bonus episodes are. Um, and then we posted there. The patrons got their mini sewed videos. So, yeah, oh, that was fun. <laughs> now we get to decide what we're recording for the next one. <laughs> you guys tell us what the hell you want us to do. Probably no challenges. What are those? I had people saying they were going to do like not the cinnamon challenge, but. Oh, What's the God. one where, like, have you seen it where they, like, tie, like, a water bottle? There's something tied to a fan, like a water bottle. And you're all, like, blindfolded. And then the fan's going, and it's whipping the thing around, and you're trying to, like, duck. I feel like I've seen this on, like, TikTok videos or something. Oh, my God, no. Or, like, like, people standing in a circle, and then the, the thing's whipping around, and they try to duck, but they have to guess when it's coming by because they're, like, blindfolded. <laughs> Maybe it wasn't a water bottle. It wasn't it wasn't anything like too dangerous if it hit you in the head. <laughs> Jesus. But, no thanks. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, we're willing to do other stuff. Like we did the tea leaf reading, we did those things and the tarot yeah. cards and stuff. That was fun. <laughs> um but yeah, let us know. What should we do for December Patreon? video <laughs> yeah december already oh my god right well yeah and well i had some ideas i guess for november december we'll see we'll see okay so my case has nothing to do with mexico it happened in the united states okay. but 
it happened on November 2nd. So it was, I actually was like looking up crimes that happened on November 1st and crimes that happened on November 2nd. And there was a cool website that was like crimes by date throughout history. It was very helpful. Oh. I was like, I will probably come back to you. <laughs> yes. Yeah. That could be, could be helpful. That'd be very have. helpful. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes we have a hard time picking the crime episodes. I have always lots of ideas for like the more paranormal, mysterious ones, like just weird shit. I just love, but crimes, it can be hard because they're like, they all seem like they're going to be so dark, <laughs> but yeah. they're crimes. So, oh, the catfishing crimes was really, really fun. That was yes. really interesting. Technically, nobody like died, so it wasn't that no. dark. <laughs> yeah, that was a was wild good. episode, like one of our oh, wildest yeah. yet. Like, yeah, there was like multiple. Yeah, both of our personalities going on. <laughs> both of our cases were just insane. Yeah, they're a little more than your typical. <laughs> one person pretending to be one other person <laughs> yeah that's all we'll that's all we'll say you'll have to go on to yeah. patreon join patreon castles and cryptids yes you can get the bonus episodes at any level so you can join the two dollar level and binge that shit for a good price less than a cup of coffee all right <laughs> yeah so some of you might know this case it's pretty um been recently in the true crime news because there has been updates going on in this year 2022 so this is the case of sherry papini um sorry i have a gordo he's being annoying oh, oh. with this lamp <laughs> i did see <laughs> him come in or like a tail like your attention was yeah. all of a sudden <laughs> focused in a gordo corner just lay down. Figure out what you're going to do and lay down. <laughs> so annoying. <Sorry. clears throat> there. All right. Gordo's all settled in. No. I think so. For the moment. <laughs> Everybody grab your Gordos. And no. <laughs> I told you that I, I was reading something in somebody else's cat or animal was named after yeah. Gord Downey. And I was like, that's so weird. I just now can't remember where I read it, but it was cool. <laughs> yeah. Anywho. Okay. So Sherry Papini was born Sherry Louise Groff. I'm not sure how to say that. I apologize. G-R-A-E-F-F. Groff, Grafe. Take your pick. Um, yeah. <laughs> that was her maiden name, though. It doesn't come up again. So, oh. um, And she was born on June 11th, 1982. She is five foot three inches tall, an inch shorter than me. <laughs> pretty, pretty small. And she had a sister that she grew up with. Um, I don't have a lot of background from early childhood life for her, but she was married in 2006 to a man named David Dreyfus. So she did get married um, for the first time in 2006 and they were divorced actually by late 2008 um david had been in the military he was like away for most of the time they were married mm. like on tour and whatnot okay and um i guess i was reading that she told a lot of people that primarily her motivation for marrying him had to do with the health insurance he got oh. being in the army <laughs> for That's her various not... medical conditions quote unquote <laughs> that's not great <laughs> But I mean, oh, fuck the U.S. Her medical yeah. insurance. So sad. Right. Well, we, yeah, but just every, every place could improve with the, we need more sick days, you know, everything yeah. needs to be like free as possible. <laughs> yeah. So that was a weird little tidbit that I found in my research that I didn't remember hearing necessarily wow. the first time I heard the case. Um. But anyway, they divorced in 2008, and then by late 2009, she had uh, met and married Keith Papini. So that's why she's now Sherry Papini. <laughs> hmm. So they go on to have two kids together, so they are happy, and presumably he's home more than the first husband, because <laughs> they managed to pop yeah. a couple of kids. 
And hopefully she's with him for more than just insurance, I guess. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah. Yeah, they know they seem to love their kids and each other. Like they always looked very happy in all the like pictures you can find of their like marriage together. Um so that's good. So far so good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, and uh, flash forwards, so they married in 2009, and then they've by 2016, they've got two kids together, and it's November 2nd, 2016. <gasps> Sherry goes for what? <laughs> dun dun. I know, I was just like, why am I saying 2016? This does not sound natural. 2016. <laughs> but yes, November 2nd, so. Sherry goes for a morning run along what's called the Old Oregon Trail and Sunset Drive. Which kind of made me laugh because Oregon Trail <laughs> was like yeah. a computer game or whatever. Yeah. Um, and <laughs> you get like dysentery or whatever. <laughs> um, so this was technically in Mountain View, California, but she and they live in Redding, um, California. So she goes for a run in the morning and everybody else is at school and at work. Um, and then it, she fails to pick her kids up after daycare that um, mm. afternoon. Yeah. So this is not good. And the husband gets called and then he's like, okay, I have to pick up my kids. What's going on? And yeah. he can't find her at home. So he, he called the cops. Like he calls 911 or whatever. Excuse me. Oh, now I got the burps because I started drinking something carbonated. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> so he calls 911. He's frantic and worried. Like, you can listen to the 911 call, which I did listen to the clip of it. And he's like, My wife's gone out for a run. Like, he keeps saying how she just started running again. Like, he's obviously kind of almost babbling mm -hmm. a little because he kept repeating things yeah. that weren't. He was like, she just started running again, and I don't see her, and, like, she was not home. She was supposed to pick up the kids, but she's not here, and then she's, they're, like, trying to calm him down and ask him questions and stuff, like, what's her name? Yeah. <laughs> like, how old yeah. is she? Yeah. And, um, ba -ba -ba -ba, so he's on the phone with them, and she's kind of like, sit tight, you know, we'll get your information and send some people out, and, um... They find on the running trail that her headphones were found on top of her phone, kind of coiled oh. up and sitting on top of the phone. Yeah. Okay. It's weird. Yeah, it is a little weird, right? <clears throat> so they're like, have some hair tangled in the headphones, Aww. but they're found, yeah, found right with the phone and everything. So that's all they find. And cops are kind of waiting to see if any kidnappers come forward with any ransom because it would look like she's been abducted, but yeah. like no reward is being asked for and kind of the days are stretching on into weeks as, you know, they're searching, searching for any sign of Sherry. Oh, geez. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's going on for a while. Like, um, a GoFundMe was set up to aid the search efforts, and it raised nearly fifty thousand um, dollars. And then there was a little bit I read about or heard about. I didn't super understand, but it was kind of like they said that a mysterious, like an anonymous donor, had offered up um, a reward. So not part of okay. a GoFundMe, but something called it like a a reverse ransom because it was like they were offering the reward and then if people were to produce sherry then the reward would be paid but they called it a reverse ransom i was like okay oh. <clears throat> so and i guess like volunteering to pay out a reward for the family yeah yeah but it was an anonymous person and i the cop, i've the heard of that in a few. It. <laughs> i've heard of that in a few yeah. cases yeah um, really yeah, I've never heard the like, term reverse ransom. 
like a family member like somebody that knows the family will like put up money if the family like can't afford to offer anything but yeah yeah yeah, i don't think it's normally normally i don't think it would be anonymous that part yeah yeah it does seem weird to me too and it it's like okay a reward we've all heard of a reward so i kind of get that but it, it just it, it was a little bizarre and the, and the cops didn't love the idea of this being offered up they didn't think it was a great idea i guess hmm. um they would rather just you know they're like we haven't been contacted by anyone so you, people could just come out of the woodwork if you're starting to yeah. you know you got to be able to prove that you All have random. information or like i have her yeah so the days are passing and the normal things going on like where the husband Keith and even Sherry's mom like appeared on TV just asking the public for help and the kind of things they always do yeah um yeah like just pleading with whoever's got her to bring her home and um dealing with the search efforts and the police and all that and the kids and so I feel so bad for those kids I know yeah yeah I don't know what they were told about what was going on it must have been hard <clears throat> they were very young um then on november 24th 22 days after sherry went missing she is found by california highway patrol officers running along a highway on an on-ramp of interstate five on american thanksgiving <laughs> okay Sorry. that's really sh- i was not expecting her to turn up alive yeah like three weeks later that's wow. unlikely and like okay people called it in they were like this lady's running on the highway and they saw her run towards i think a church and it wasn't open or something so she like ran back towards the highway and that's where they caught up with her and hmm. like, oh hey we think we know who you are <laughs> yeah um okay. yeah <laughs> So, so far, so good, right? This is seems yeah. like a happy ending. <laughs> I've, I've like a thousand question marks floating above my head and like the plot of Gone Girl just like flashed before my eyes. <gasps> and then like, if this was a book, would you be checking how many pages were left to be like, can they wrap this <laughs> up so fast? It was driving me crazy. I got a book from the library. I got a book from the library and then I wanted the next one in the series. And then they only had it on mm. ebook, and I was like, "It keeps telling me I have different amounts of pages left, and I have no idea." <laughs> it's driving oh, me geez. crazy. I'm so old school. I'd like to have my book. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, okay. So uh, then, 34 year old Sherry. So I'm meaning, I don't know. That made did make sense, but she was 34 years old when this was happening when Happen. she was picked up. This is, Hmm. what, a couple of years ago? Yeah, 2016. So she was found still dressed in sweats. Um, She had a chain encircling her waist, which was attached to her left wrist with a zip tie. Oh, my God. Okay. Yeah. And she had apparently something called hose clamps on her ankles. Oh, shit. Yeah. They're, like, adjustable circular um, clamps. Yeah um you're familiar with hose clamps <laughs> i had to look it up yes uh well i've helped my dad like install a washer a few times like a washing machine or, like oh, a dishwasher okay. and they use those on the back so it has like the screw and then it can go and you can like tighten and loosen it right yeah well, okay Definitely. cool 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 things you learn from dads <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So apparently those were on her ankles as to be used as yeah. pain compliance restraints. So to Yeah, like that'd be shitty. Like it's yeah. It's basically like a an a, a reusable like adjustable zip tie. Um, like a metal one, right? Yeah, like metal. It's metal. pretty thick. It's probably like a centimeter oh, okay. like wide and then it has like a screw or oh, kind of okay. like a um yeah you normally like screw it and you can but you can like unscrew it and it'll like expand again and then it can contract but i mean that would be so uncomfortable like you could make it way tight yeah yeah 
Oh, and it would cut in so much too. Yeah, yeah. Pardon me. Jeez. Oh, that's terrible. Yeah, so she's not looking great. <laughs> oh but my God. she's she's alive. Um yeah, they were about a hundred um and they were also about 146 miles from her home in Reading. So they were wow. quite yeah. far off. I forget exactly where this was. Interstate 5. <laughs> yeah, so she was taken to the nearest hospital where she was examined and treated for what they could, which included a lot of like healing bruises and abrasions. Mm. Um, and also a crude brand appeared to be burned into her shoulder. Jesus. So that was weird. Yeah. And also her nose was broken and her hair had been cut cut off and like oh wow. Pretty short. Yeah. Yeah. I can see in the picture she's got like super long, like probably waist length almost blonde hair. Right. Ooh. I don't know if I did include if there was any pictures of like after don't think there really was yeah like it a, yeah, yeah it's almost down to her waist like her hair yeah uh, oh yeah 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 you can see it pretty good in one of them yeah so she's got really long hair she's probably really proud of it <laughs> you know yeah. oh, oh shit i lost you there we are <laughs> okay so she's treated for her nose and stuff like that and then she's questioned a little bit and you know probably not much at first because they're treating her and all that but she mm -hmm. briefly describes her captors as two hispanic women <clears throat> who spoke mostly spanish and um played mariachi music while they tortured her okay that's that's so <laughs> weird right it's like okay because it's loud so shitty i'm sorry that's that's like the worst music to get tortured to they played it really loud just as part of the torture oh my god not that i'm saying it's bad music just like the upbeat like happiness of it would just be like very very traumatizing i remember there was this old commercial and they had a slower one and it was like all i remember is it was like three guys around the like serenading the couple at the dinner table at the restaurant or whatever um, and they're like oh yo 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 sissy i want a cell phone <laughs> i don't even remember it must have been a cell phone commercial anyway nice. um <laughs> yeah Things that live in my head rent free. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Stupid jingles. Um, okay. So uh, she gave some other answers about her ordeal, uh, but they were kind of vague. She had told the police that she was told she was being held and abducted to be sold, you know. Yeah, As that's what whatever. I kind of thought with like the branding and the haircut. Sure. And it being two women that are abducting her. Yeah, you're like, okay, mm. well, what? Yeah, they're obviously not keeping her for like to kill her, you wouldn't think, or they would have done it already or something. Yeah. Yeah. Um, she was told that the person who was going to be buying her was a police officer, also. Jeez. Um, yeah, so that's kind of a weird detail but she yeah. didn't know where she was kept or anything only that she'd been taken in an suv and kept chained up most of the time in some sort of a house or something um so they interviewed her often with her husband there because she was very reluctant to speak with police almost being described as being combative with them and like saying like you're not on my side i don't want to talk to you unless my husband's here because he's on my side like just like yeah i, don't I know. can understand that if she thought she was going to be sold to a police officer yeah maybe you don't know who to trust after yeah. your ordeal you're traumatized too <clears throat> um 
So police went to get some other answers too, where they could and question friends and family about Sherry's life and past past behaviors and received many responses about how Sherry would uh, crack under pressure. And some said she had a quote, tendency to lie and run away. So, okay. Well. Okay. <laughs> They're like, all right, interesting. I'm going to um, keep that in the back of my mind. File that one away <laughs> for future. Yeah. <laughs> um, apparently a 21 year old Sherry had, had to her mom had had call, called 911 on her because she'd been trying to harm herself um at the time this was back in 2003 hmm. so they knew of that incident because obviously if you call 911 then they're gonna log that they have to yeah um still her family all s- insisted that she had loved her husband and children and would not have willingly abandoned them they were like that's not her she loves keith and the kids yeah um yeah so it's all kind of interesting and (laughs) it's a little strange uh then they found that some of the dna that had been found on her was female dna but there was also an unknown male dna profile so that didn't match up with what she'd said Mm, yeah um and like they were getting lots and lots of tips pouring in like during the search effort and all this and that, but the information they were getting from Sherry was little and not very helpful. She didn't seem to be able to recall many details that was helping them. Um, Oh, okay. Yeah. Like her recollections were described as spotty, spotty with details and inconsistent. Hmm. She did claim to have had an altercation with one of the women where she slammed the woman's head into a toilet and apparently it managed to get a cut on her own foot in return, as she said, during the scuffle. Okay. Um, I think she might have said that to hospital staff or police, but the hospital found no wound on her foot at all, healing or otherwise. So they were like, okay, that's weird. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't really match up again. <laughs> um. And for all the time she'd spent with these Hispanic women, yeah. you know, three weeks. I mean, that's, them. that's a lot of time not to remember anything unless yeah. you're like being consistently drugged or something. Right. 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 So I, ge- I guess she couldn't understand what they were saying if it was Spanish, but mm-hmm. yeah, it was, it was like they had so much heart of a hard time with her it took basically it said like a year before they had a composite sketch done from her oh wow recollections yeah that's wild that took a while yeah um yeah so it's like okay and uh they interviewed keith who was happy in his marriage with sherry he said there was nothing going on in their marriage no cheating nothing like that to be you know, worried about, like, he didn't have any reason not to get along with her, I guess. Yeah. Um, well, except police did discover she had been texting several guys before her disappearance. (laughs) So she's got some secrets (laughs) to hide. Yeah. Yeah. Something's going on. Oh, yeah. And, like, I don't know when to say this, but, like, I did fairly shallow dive considered compared to like i listened to two episodes that sinisterhood did on it they did a two-parter and it was really good yeah especially like just i don't know all the details on the they're always good at the court details and stuff like that i don't know Mm -hmm. yeah um yeah definitely it's a good one um so they found out that the DNA, the male DNA that was on her, actually ended up belonging to an ex-boyfriend's of, boyfriend of hers named James Reyes. Interesting. Okay. <laughs> Whoops. Shit. I'm closing that tab. Well, I'm just making it bigger. Okay. Onto my pages. 
Okay, so yes, <laughs> they're like, okay, well, this didn't match anyone in the criminal database, but they eventually were able to find out that it matched her ex, um, <laughs> who was one of the guys she had been texting with. There was another guy, but he was cleared with an alibi and whatever okay. at the time. Yeah. So they contacted James Reyes and questioned him. And by the time they contacted him, he basically immediately confirmed that, yeah, he'd been in touch with Sherry. Um, she said she hadn't talked to him in years. He said, yeah, she contacted me to get help leaving what she said was an abusive relationship. Oh my God, so. it is gone, girl. <laughs> I was so happy when you said that. I was like, she's going to be too smart to be taken I'm just, in. I'm looking at the picture of, I assume it's <laughs> Keith, her husband, it's the back of his head, and she's over the shoulder, and I'm just making eye contact with her, being yes. like, if you slit, if you slit Neil Patrick's hair is his fucking throat. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Wait, was he that too? Yeah. Oh, okay, gotcha. All I can remember yeah, is Ben he, Affleck now. <laughs> yeah. Just making eye uh, contact with being like, you fuck her. <laughs> yeah, she looks very sweet and innocent. Yeah, he's like holding her. It must be some photo shoot because he's like holding her. So you can just see the back of his head and then her face over his it's shoulder. It's like and she's the just, like, only smiling. picture where she's not like ear to ear smiling. <laughs> and I'm just like oh, staring yeah. at it being like, fuck you. <laughs> Continue. I couldn't give it away in the pictures. I could have put pictures of her coming out of the courtroom. <laughs> oh. Oh. Okay. All right. So we'll get to it. Um, yeah. The whole time she had been missing, she was staying with James. He had known exactly mm -hmm. where she was. So he lived f a few hours away. So he said, or quote, he revealed that Papini suggested he rent a car and pick her up. They then traveled nine hours south to Costa Mesa, where she stayed at his apartment with him for weeks. Reyes also revealed that the bruises, cuts, and burns on her body were largely self-inflicted, and that she also asked him to hurt her. <laughs> I just... Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, some weird... Like... Like, what did he think of that? <laughs> Yeah. Like, hey, honey, brand me in the shoulder. Yeah, like I'm fleeing abusive relationship, but I also like want to <laughs> look like I've been abused. Like, okay. Yeah. Sure. Are you framing someone for abuse? Or like, <laughs> that's what I would yeah. wonder. Um, she sent him to, there's an American store called like Hobby Lobby. So I don't know. I picture oh, yeah. like a craft store or like a, yeah, some like home yeah. or something. I don't know. <laughs> Um, I think it's like get, I think it's like a Home Depot Lowe's type okay hardware store. Yeah, because that's where they get the wood burning tool to put the brand on her. Mm. <laughs> Shit, that ought to fucking hurt. Yeah, yeah. he literally said, "Sure, I'll do it, but this is probably gonna hurt. I've never done this before." <laughs> Fuck, that was like a quote. I was. Like, I mean, okay. anybody. Anybody yeah. that's, like, burned themselves accidentally knows that, like, I would oh, yeah. rather get cut by something than get burned. Like, burning just hurts yeah. so much more. Like, it's so much worse. Yeah, like, yeah. And they used to sell those little, you could get little wood-burning craft kits when I was a kid that they sold. I bet mm -hmm. if you burnt yourself on that, it would not feel good. Oh, yeah. And, like, one source said that she said that it was a bible verse burned onto her like super tiny but holy obviously shit that was never confirmed yeah <laughs> it was like how like okay it's, it's too small to read it's on a grain of rice <laughs> <laughs> right <laughs> Um, but yeah, like she committed, she ate very wow. little while she was away so that she would like lose weight and be like emaciated because she was yeah. like, less than a hundred pounds or some shit when she got back. I was like, fucking commitment. <laughs> yeah. It even says like on her missing thing, it says she weighs like 106 pounds or something. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. I think she was less than a hundred when she got back. Wow. Crazy. Um, 
So yeah, by the time Thanksgiving rolled around, she started to really miss her kids. She must have because she asked then for James to take her home. Um, meanwhile, of course, she had been all over the news, like watching videos yeah, of her mom fuck? feeding her to come home. Her mom, like literally at one point was like, if you have Sherry, please come home. Like, just please bring her home. Sherry, we miss you. Please come home. And like, they speculated on sinisterhood that like maybe the mom was in a way like please come home like if this is you doing this to yourself please come home oh uh, that she might have had a suspicion a suspicion yeah yeah because they said she used to run like i don't know they said oh shit got bad she'd run away so i mean i don't know i did stupid shit and ran away as a teenager a few times, but it's like I don't know. <laughs> I've grown you didn't up. Plan your, you didn't plan your own yeah. three week long abduction and frame. Yeah, it's a bit different. <laughs> I mean, I would hope she would she would have grown out of it too. Um. Wow. So once the cops had the. X's side of the story, Reyes's side. They called Sherry in for another I- interview. This was in August of 2020, almost four years since she'd gone missing. Wow, that's a long time. It took a while for, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's why there's been updates and stuff even this year, which we'll Jeez. get to. We're getting there. Um, they reminded her it was illegal to lie to the cops. <laughs> Duh. Yeah. They, they're like, we have James's DNA. We have his version of events. What do you want to say now? And she's like, oh, no. She denied having any contact with him and said, Jason, it couldn't be Jason. He loves me. He wouldn't do this. I mean, maybe that's why he would do it. <laughs> Well, like, um, it's not like he, you're not saying he actually kidnapped you. You went over to his house. No, and she's just still denying it. Yeah, she's still yeah, weird. It. He, he loves after... me. He wouldn't let me run away from an abusive relationship and stay at his house for three weeks. He loves me too much to do that. To do I that. To him. <laughs> yeah. That doesn't make any sense. <laughs> no. Like, um. Fuck. They said that his story had been corroborated by looking at his, quote, phone records, work schedule, rental car receipts, receipts, odometer records, toll records, and an interview with his cousin who says they saw Papini in the home. Yeah. (laughs) So they they got it now. (laughs) They're like, yeah, he's telling the truth. (laughs) Um, So as they're telling sherry all this in the interview room with keith there he becomes agitated and leaves the room like, yeah totally. holy shit yeah he I knew would be nothing fear- i would be like flipping a table at you like <laughs> right yeah like he obviously like he was seriously worried about her the whole time like she's crazy i mean she has mental issues i should say <laughs> but um by March of 2022, Papini is arrested for mail fraud and false statements. They had their case built and they were ready to go. Wow. Um, okay. Yeah. And then I had a quoted a <clears throat> par- paragraph or two from The Sun. When investigators questioned Papini, she stuck to her story but was handcuffed in front of her two children and brought to jail, which her family said was an ambush. Papini's family released a statement and said, we love Sherry and are appalled by the way in which law, enfor- law enforcement ambushed her in a dramatic and unnecessary manner in front of her children. Okay. Um, <laughs> the f- I think I have a little bit more on it later that describes it a little more in detail. We'll get some d- different side of it. Uh, mm-hmm. The family added that Papini and her husband were cooperating with investigators' requests Quote, despite repeated attempts to unnecessarily pit them against each other, empty threats to publicly embarrass them, and other conduct that was less than professional, end quote. So the family is sticking behind her. Which is well, I can see from the cop's point of view, it's like, cut the bullshit. Like, yeah. At that point, you're just wasting so much manpower and resources. Mm -hmm. Like, that's the real issue. Yeah. Yeah. 
Um, to continue, it said, however, following Papini's arrest, her husband filed for divorce, saying he was traumatized by the events. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, again, don't blame him. Um, oh, Papini was taken to Sacramento County Jail, and the judge determined she would not be released on bail after prosecutors argued she was a flight risk. Yeah, she faked her own kidnapping. <laughs> Of course she's a flight risk i know that's why it's crazy because do, 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 they're gonna give her bond they're gonna release her a little bit oh my god in, at least on on bond we'll see the community of reading her home was shocked and appalled by the news they had rallied around the papinis especially one couple who were also missing a daughter since 1998 um, and they had become kind of close with Sh- with Sherry's family. Fuck. Yeah. Yeah. And they said it was kind of like a slap in the face. End quote. Yeah. But like, don't um, blame her husband and the kids. They had nothing to do with no. it. Like, no, 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 no. It was, they're just like, the, the wife, Marilyn, said it just kind of makes a mockery of anyone who's really lost a person. And she's not yeah. wrong. Oh, yeah. Oh, like she yeah. she traumatized her own family by doing this exactly like, yeah it's not in any way the same and but like yeah she acted like she acted like it was the same she was like oh yeah it was terrible for me i mean yeah i hope they find your daughter blah 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 <laughs> uh, yeah and her hoax cost taxpayers over three hundred thousand dollars in investigative resources they figure Yeesh. Wow. She pled guilty in April to all charges. So that was April of this year. And then it said that she was released on a $120,000 bail bond. Um, hmm. So what I could find on that, because I was also like, really? Uh, quote, during a virtual bail hearing at Sacramento Federal Court Tuesday, prosecutors asked Judge Jeremy Peterson to keep Papini locked up arguing she was a major flight risk and had previously gone to extreme measures, quote unquote, to hide from law enforcement. I don't even think putting an ankle bracelet on her could ensure her appearance because if someone is willing to brand themselves, they're just as easily to be willing to cut off an ankle monitor, prosecutors argued. Yeah. This defendant, yeah, yeah. Um, There's a little bit more. This defendant ran away and successfully hid from law enforcement for three weeks and only returned out of her own will despite a nationwide hunt for her. And now in that instance, she was not facing federal prison time, which would have given her even more of a motivation to flee. Um, Papini's attorney, Michael Borges, argued Papini should be released on her own recognizance recognizance however you say that (laughs) considering she has no criminal record and the offenses she was charged with were non-violent he asked that his client be spared an ankle monitor because any kind of restraints quote-unquote are traumatizing quote-unquote given her past abduction which papini still maintains happened (laughs) this was at the time of this article papini has a diagnosed condition complex post-traumatic stress disorder And that condition might be exacerbated by affixing the GPS monitor, said Borges. Physical restraints have an impact on both her psychiatric well-being and also risks public ridicule and stigmatization of Mrs. Papini while she maintains the presumption of innocence. Then keep her in prison. If you can't handle an ankle monitor, keep her in prison. Like, holy fuck. (laughs) Okay, here's here's where I had about when she tried to, when she got arrested. And the rest of this, sorry, it was a long quote but i i liked all this info um yeah prosecutors further argued that when cops tried to place her under arrest she resisted and attempted to run away (laughs) after tailing her from her home to a piano lesson for her children an officer went inside the building and lied to her that her car had been involved in an accident so they could take her into custody safely outside and not in the presence of her children but when Papini wow. was told she was under arrest, so they didn't ambush her that bad. Like, anyway, she allegedly screamed, no, and threw her phone approximately 20 feet and ran away from the office, officer, prosecutors said. Oh, my God. Um, <laughs> no. <just> picture it. <laughs> he, 
she was not able to get very far before the agent did manage to arrest her, but she did resist. Uh, she had to go partially to the ground in order for him to arrest her. At some wow. point during the arrest, her children did exit the building and did see her arrest, prosecutors said. That's on her. <laughs> like, fuck. Yeah, <laughs> I agree. Um, Borges denied the prosecutor's description of the events and said Papini only moved her body to be closer to her children, fearing they were in danger. Peterson wow. ultimately found that he had serious concerns about the allegations against Papini and her alleged history of dishonesty and agreed to release her on a 120000 partially secured bond. $70,000 the bond will be secured by her husband Keith Papini's property and the additional 50000 will be co-signed by her parents. Wow. Yep. And she was sentenced to 18 months plus probation, which was what the girl in my catfish crimes got to. Whoops, spoiler. 18 months. Same shit. Yeah. Um, and <clears throat> after that, her husband Keith said, uh, well, he filed for a divorce and said, my current focus is on moving on and doing everything I can to provide my two children with as normal, healthy, and happy of a life as possible. Yeah, hoping he is awarded permanent, like, full fucking custody of these kids. Oh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, because she's not going to be in jail oh. that long. Yeah. Um, oh, my God. <laughs> U.S. Judge William Shubb ordered her to pay $309,000 in restitution. But Good. I was wondering out. if they were going to sue her for the cost of her fucking missing investigation. Right. So that sounds like they're going to try and recoup it. Um, but as he himself pointed out, I would ask rhetorically, who is going to employ her in the future? He also yeah. told her she was mani manipulative and said, quote, people don't like to be conned. Okay. And, and to that, to that point, um, <clears throat> someone, somebody had something to say from the uh, Latino community, Alan Ernesto yeah. Phillips. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> they had something to say. Um, who is an advocate for Shasta County, small Latino community said that the Latino the Latin community felt vilified. He said, there are no dangerous masked gun toting Hispanic Latino women here wanting to abduct your children, especially if they're white End quote. <clears throat> I can imagine um, how many of them were probably like questioned and interrogated because she yeah, made up even, this bullshit. Yeah. Or even just lived in fear of that happening. Yeah. Yeah, especially um, in, like, a small community, like you said. Like, yeah. Yeah, it is. That. Yeah, I think it was pretty small. Wow. And, like, of course, there's lots of Latinos in, like, Southern America, you know, Southern California, yeah. shit like that. Um, another factor that pissed people off was that the GoFundMe money was partly used to pay off credit card bills and stuff. Because, you know... She got home, so then what are they going to do with their GoFundMe money? They're going to spend it on their own Jesus. debt. <laughs> well, Sherry, Sherry, I would say, made that decision. Um, yeah, that's weird. Yeah, and then other stuff came up from her past, too, that also didn't look great. Mm. Um, in 2007... The year my daughter was born um <laughs> she had made some posts under her maiden name uh which made racist comments about latinos that was good yeah so we we see she had a, a bit of a history of that um apparently during her school years she had said there was this group of latino girls who bullied her and didn't she said didn't like her because she was quote drug free white and proud of her heritage so who knows she, yeah doesn't sound great um kids bully kids for like literally every reason you could possibly imagine like yeah fucking... that sounds like she's projecting those yeah you know, um ideas 
Uh, it also came out how she once kicked in the back door. Her sister said that. And her dad talked about how she once vandalized his house. So there was oh, some wow. stuff that came out. <laughs> and just to wrap up, after she was sentenced, Papini told the court, I stand before you humbled by the court. I am so sorry to the many people who have suffered, suffered because of me. I thank you all. Um, I am guilty of lying and dishonor. I trust in this court and I trust in you. What was done cannot be undone. I am choosing to humbly accept all responsibility. And Doesn't really sound like it. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. She's required to report to prison to serve her 18 month sentence on November 8th. 2022 oh. so that was three days ago now Jeez. That's, that's the end of my case wow i'm so glad you didn't know that actually because then i could surprise no you. i had no <laughs> idea because really, you were on to it <laughs> it was like it's hard to tell yeah, I probably wouldn't have been so on to it if like earlier today i hadn't watched a thing about a guy who <clears throat> what was it uh is it called like murder next door or Ooh. an american murder the family next door and it was the oh, guy okay like he Sounds familiar killed his wife and then like killed his two young daughters and then he Ugh. like at first he faked their like disappearance uh okay saying oh. that they disappeared after she came home from a flight um at like 2 a.m oh. and then he went to work at like 5 a.m and when he went at five like she had disappeared and it was like what happened in these three hours or whatever and right then, right right and then it went from there it turned into well she was mad because i was cheating on her so she killed our daughters and then i got mad at her for killing our two daughters so i oh killed my her god um okay and then it completely and then it, <laughs> and then it devolved into no i killed the mom and then like the daughters walked in on it so he like <gasps> literally yeah it was like brutal it he ended up basically saying he like packed uh... the like the wife's body was like in a bed sheet on the floor in the back of the like truck and the daughters were sitting in the seats in the back of the truck like with their dead mom like at their feet and he drove like oh. 45 minutes to an hour to his uh work site where he worked and like he then like smothered the girls one by one and like he said oh yeah oh. when i smothered it was so brutal oh, he's like no, the, yes chris yeah. something is the guy yeah oh, what a piece of shit yes and then he's like yes, yeah I've when he went to go after like I can't remember if it was the youngest daughter or what. She's like, what happened to, like, Cece? Like, what did you yeah. do to Cece? I was like, Jesus Christ, like. Like, are you going to kill me too, Daddy? Yeah, that is so fucked up. Yeah. And they, like, stuffed into a barrel or something. Ugh. Yeah, the two girls were in, like, an oil drum and the wife was, like, buried Ugh. in the sand. But it was, like, holy fuck like if i hadn't probably watched that this morning i probably wouldn't have been like you fucking fake kidnappers <laughs> interesting yeah i didn't i wouldn't have thought of parallels between that because i have heard that one i just can't remember the exact name yeah. but yeah that's a fucked up case also that's kind of mm. like that has parallels to in my india crimes case the mom was being mm. killed and then the other people walked yeah. in on and then, like the daughter and like several other family members everybody whoa yeah. that's crazy I, I don't understand these things of like people it's not even like people trying to escape like what they say is like an abusive relationship or people that just like aren't yeah. happy in their relationship so they come up with these like crazy fucking insane things to do to escape oh, yeah. their lives and it's like just get a divorce like oh yeah, my it's god 15 fucking what is it when they just invented divorce and it was still like so taboo like okay i mean it has been taboo the people, for a long time but it's so yeah, fucking stupid but it's like yeah. more than 50 percent of people get divorced like just fucking yeah. get divorced like jesus don't murder oh, yeah, each other was don't fake your kidnapping yeah. like what the fuck? that was because they didn't believe in divorce in what catholicism or whatever so then they had yeah. to start the whole oops new religion but it is fucked up how long that shit's been taboo i was listening to 
um, the t- top 10 ish presidential scandals. Mm. And one of the ones on the list that was considered a scandal at the time was Woodrow Wilson marrying a woman who was either divorced or widowed or something. And that was the whole scandal that she had been married before. <laughs> It's like what the fuck this is like 19 <clears throat> whatever like get over it yeah. <laughs> it's not a fucking big deal <laughs> yeah like and wow. in this i don't understand what her plan was like did she plan to stay know. to stay gone forever like what's what's her game it doesn't plan seem here? like it because she yeah. was like making all the stuff to go with her story so it seemed like she planned on coming back but That's obviously so it's like weird. do you just want attention like i don't understand how her mind works either no. must be uh, so, yeah some people do like being victims of things yeah like very um almost uh what's that <laughs> sorry that, like, i'm laughing because i saw, saw yeah yeah he was, was stretching his... his... uh, he was stretching so his butt was shaking like right by the way. man in black shadow man no <laughs> um Just kidding. that uh um, sorry what's that one where people make up like illnesses and stuff like that oh like munchausen or yeah well or or munchausen syndrome or when you're just a hypochondriac then you always think you're sick yeah Yeah. it's like it's like such a yeah like an attention-y i have to be a victim Mm -hmm. look at me kind of thing yeah yeah because then you get attention and stuff sometimes (laughs) yeah yeah oh it's weird yeah i just i don't understand what her what her game plan was here Right. What, you're gonna have a vacation from three week for three weeks and then like go back to it and everything's fine. <laughs> Why for Ooh, the rest got... of your life about this crazy thing and be involved in all these right. police investigations? Yeah, like, yeah. Hopefully like, nobody oh, gets a little thrilled. Yeah. 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 She was yeah. just bored, you know, didn't want to have an affair. <laughs> like luck yeah i don't think we'll ever i don't think we'll ever understand (laughs) well i feel so bad for the husband and the kids like i know i'm happy he didn't stand by her and divorced her ass and like yeah because people were like did he know anything and they were like how could he have it doesn't seem like he knew anything at all and they're like yeah why why would you want to be involved in that (laughs) what would you get yeah sure honey him Fake your kidnapping. Go hang out with your ex boyfriend. I'll just be here with the kids, right. talking to oh, the yeah. news every day. Oh yeah, and I'm sure they weren't hooking up at all when that whole time. <laughs> yeah, you know. Yeah. Wow. Well, <laughs> Wild. What's up crazy. next time on this crazy show? <laughs> uh, so we're hoping to have a you know by the grace of all the gods have yeah. another episode out. <laughs> knock on wood next week (laughs) (sighs) and it won't be themed (laughs) it's um (laughs) no it's not themed to the date but it is to do with secrets of the sea yeah some ocean mysteries (laughs) some unexplained things oh i just whistled (laughs) yeah i heard it (laughs) i didn't mean to i was like Ooh, and then the the air coming in. I can't whistle, so that was really weird. <laughs> yeah, I'm excited. There's so many topics to do with the friggin' ocean and just oh, yeah, it's very mysterious and creepy and weird. <laughs> yeah, it love it should be a good one. So check it out I'm next week to it. Yeah. In the meantime check out our patreon yeah we have a bunch of bonus episodes over there now we've given you a couple sneak peeks i think this is the second time we've given a sneak peek at like a bonus patreon episode that's right yeah because you definitely don't want to don't want to put all your patreon ones out on the regular feed that wouldn't be fair but if you guys enjoyed it, you know, our episodes are 
over on Patreon as long as they normally are over here. And oh yeah. Yeah. That's good shit. Some sometimes they're even longer over there. <laughs> we <laughs> we tend to edit down less, so Yeah, you saw kind of how crazy it was on their last Patreon released <laughs> episode. Yeah. We we're a little bit more. La la la. Um but also speaking of loving the show, I did promise you I was going to read you a show review <gasps> that we got on yes. Good Pods. And if you didn't read it yet, then I can't wait to read it to you. <laughs> I didn't. I forgot. I was too okay, busy was watching from... too busy watching everything on Amazon Prime and Netflix that I <laughs> that you never humanly thought you'd have time to watch. <laughs> Right? Like, there's literally, between the two, less than a handful of TV shows left that- and one of them was literally just, like, Unsolved Mysteries that has, like, 18 seasons. Um, and I was like, yeah, <laughs> not gonna watch that. Yeah. No, that'll take you a while. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, so this was from Zach, who, uh, I've listened to their podcast. It's pretty cool. It's called The Neat Cast. Um, and yeah they do tend to talk about some newsy stuff and some funny stuff and some cryptidy stuff so it's a good mix Fun. <laughs> they got like three hosts yeah so this is from one of them and i really really liked it i was like oh my god thank you he said about the show love it so much historical info on locations all over the world along with spirits cryptids and some true crime mixed in for good measure Plus, Kelsey and Alana are treasures. Give them a listen. Aw, that's so sweet. <laughs> Thank you. I was tickled pink. <laughs> so thank we you. We are treasures. And... Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for Treasure. noticing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's always lots of treasure in old castles. You know, we love our castles and our cryptids. Yeah. So. I... Oh my god, before I forget, I, yes. I'm gonna do it this time. I'm gonna mention it because you didn't mention it this episode. Outlander. Okay. <laughs> oh, I did not. <laughs> uh, That's too funny. Do you and Pat watch The Boys? The Boys? The we Superhero have watched Amazon. season one at least, okay. but are not up to date with all the Jensen okay. Ackles episodes. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Uh, I'm part. I'm like halfway through season two, and they just had an episode. They're okay. kind of in, hiding. and the they're one guy. What? They're in hiding. Oh, okay. You cut out. That's all. Okay. The yeah. the down low and MM or Mother's Milk. He's like watching something on his laptop, and you could tell it was Outlander. <laughs> and then what? Uh, yeah, uh, oh Huey. My God. Huey comes in the room and he's like, "What are you watching?" He's like like slams his laptop close he's like none of your business and like all this stuff is no <laughs> um well it is like softcore porn no <laughs> it wasn't even that it was i like, can't remember what the scene was on screen oh okay no like, jamie <laughs> i think it was like outside jamie was like laying down on something and like claire was like talking i can't remember what she said she she something about like them needing to go home so I think it was probably season like one or uh, something when they're like still like in Scotland. Yeah. But. Sure. Oh, Gavin. <clears throat> oh, that's yeah. too funny. But it was like that. <laughs> I probably I probably wouldn't have noticed except it like you could tell um it's where like a com like where there was kind of like a it had gone from like kind of a quote unquote commercial break or whatever yeah. where they do where it's like a hard cut where like the scene is like black and then it starts but like his laptop screen was almost the entire screen of like what the show was so it was so very made clearly it noticeable. Yeah. yeah it wasn't like a background <laughs> thing it was like that and it had like nice. a couple lines of dialogue and he's sitting there with his headphones like <sighs> it's on his lap and I was like oh I have to mention it to <laughs> Oh yeah, totally. Now I want to watch that scene. I love it when shit gets mentioned. Like, yeah. okay. It's another s small sidebar, but I, the book I picked up from the library that I was reading, the second one in the series on the ebook that I mentioned, it's a historical mm -hmm. fiction one, and it like mm -hmm. had an endorsement from the Outlander author, and she was like, "Oh, this is a really good book." It says, and like she recommends nice. it on her 
list of books to read when you're missing Outlander. And then I'm reading it and it's about the same time frame. And then they mentioned the Outlander characters in passing. And I was like, oh, they just snuck in a cameo. Nice. <laughs> Yeah, it was cool. It was like, oh, yeah, we heard about those people. They, you know, the White Witch back in the war. And I was like, oh, that's Claire. And then, like, yeah. It, that's they, cool. Like, met, yeah, it mentioned them by name. And I was like, oh, my God, I'm so <laughs> freaking out. No. Yeah. <laughs> I love it when they do that stuff. Little crossovers. Like, oh, such a fun yeah, surprise. They, I feel like I watched something recently where they did that. But I can't remember what it was now. Oh, really? Oh. And you're just like, what? Who is this? Like, this character pops up or whatever from a different, like, universe. Yeah. Oh, that's so fun. Love it. Well, we will, I guess, catch you next week then. If that's all. Yes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's it. <laughs> Thanks for listening. Yes. Thank you for getting through it, especially yeah. you too, Kelsey. You did good. <laughs> All right, yeah. till next time. Keep it cryptic. <laughs>